G'day everyone, welcome back to Kim's Nature Journaling Adventures. In this video, I'm going to help you get started with nature journaling. Now, if you're after a quick guide that's under five minutes, then check out my previous video where I outline in just seven simple steps what nature journaling is and the general process. This video is a much more in-depth demonstration where I walk through my process in real time so that you can follow along. I've chosen a pot plant as it's the first prompt in my 31 ideas for nature journaling challenge for beginners. You can get the list in the description below, it's linked there for you. Now pot plants are a great place to start because they don't move and are quite easy to find usually, either around the house or in your backyard. So let's dive straight in. So because I'm working outside and there's just a little bit of breeze and I don't want to be annoyed by my pages. Um, fluttering. I'm going to use these bulldog clips to just put the pages, attach the pages down. I like to flip the ends down on the page that I'm not using and that way um, I won't be bothered. This notebook also has a flap so I tend to flick bring it to the back and hold it down or um, you could probably slip it behind the back page but then there's a bit of a bump on the paper. So I picked this pot plant. I have no idea what it is but that's okay. So I don't know necessarily what this is called but that's not going to bother me. I'm just going to explore, write down what I observe, any questions I have. I don't need to know all the answers but if I'm interested in finding out I can ask someone or check the internet um, after my drawing session. So I like to first spend some time observing what I'm actually going to be writing down because that sort of stimulates the thought process. Um, once I've got something I really want to put down, then I can start writing it down. Um, the other way you can do it is if you have just arrived and you're sort of not maybe sure what you're going to nature journal, you can write down some metadata to start off with. So that could be things like the title, the date, time, weather, um, location, things like that. So I might do that and then spend some time observing. Just to give an idea of what I've written down, just to start off with, so I've got uh, a title, um, some metadata, so the date, the time, the weather, and um, and that's, that's enough to get started. So I'm going to now spend some time exploring the plant. Okay, so first off, what I notice about this pot plant is the shape of the leaves. They've got this um, heart shape. This one's a bit more of a pointy end heart shape and they're quite large, about the size of my hand. Very deep green and a bit soft and rubbery, flexible. Underneath also very soft. I notice the stems have got all these tiny little stripy marks on them. A bit like a, a purple red and they certainly get more red as they go down towards the bottom, towards the soil. In the middle I've got, there are these ones that sort of stand up a little bit more. And they're the largest. And then you've got lots and lots of tiny little ones underneath. And this one has curled up. I feel like it's a new leaf. Um, it feels a lot more soft and flexible and because it's still curled up I feel like it might be in the process of opening up. And there's some dried parts might be old leaves that died, maybe from the heat a few days earlier. So around this side, uh, which is closer towards the edge of um, the patio where uh, the sun might hit it, there are definitely these spots um, that I would say is where the sun hits them. They look a bit dry and crisp. This is, you can hear it's crunchy. But the whole leaf hasn't died. I 
I feel like, let's have a look, overall look, that this side might be a little bit more lighter, but I think that's not necessarily true. It's just the illusion because this has got white. Um, the ones in the middle certainly seem darker, but not all of them. This one's quite dark. So, not sure if uh, color variation might just have to do with um, position. So the ones up here are much larger. Maybe a hand width across and maybe two hand widths long. They've got these outward branching uh, veins, which I've forgotten the name of, and they um, branch out from the same spot, so they're not alternating. So I think I've got quite a few things I want to write down. Um, let's start off with that. So I'm just starting off by drawing the shape. I don't care if I draw a line out of place, I'm quite happy to use a pen as well. It trains you to not worry about making a mistake because otherwise you're always going back with an eraser and you, you lose a lot of time doing that. Um, and you'll start to see as you draw more, those mistakes, those lines that shouldn't be there, you almost don't see them anymore. So I've just drawn, tried to draw the shape, um, and I noticed that by looking at the shape, the outline of it, it's got these little curves, these bumps, and it sort of dips inward between each of the vein um, on the outside. So I want to emphasize that. So I might say something like, so just draw a part of it. And then just note down what I'm actually trying to describe here. So um, the veins, uh, go outwards in a radial pattern. I like to use dot points, um, but you feel free to write full sentences if you prefer. And um, between, how do I say this? Between two, you can even just use arrows, so there's a dip there. A dip, and between. Um, the end points, waves in and out. So it sort of does a, a wavy action. Now I feel like counting, I feel like I don't like to count too much, um, but this is probably a doable amount of counting. Just want to count all the how many veins there are on this particular leaf. So we got one. Now it spreads off one, and then it, I might actually do that one because it's a bit separate, a bit special. So it goes up and then all the way up to the top, but it branches off quite early on to one out here, and then up the top here as well. There was another branch off. 
so there's one, two branches. Number of veins, so if we count that as the first one, then there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these main veins. So I just want to write that down somewhere. I notice that the tip of the leaf curls under and it's a bit more yellow and even brown on the very very tip. So I might just write that. Maybe put an arrow to the bottom here. And I can always add colour later. So um, lighter green to yellow and dead or brown tip that is curled under. Now I also notice with the colouring that there seems to be um, even though there's not veins that I can see, there still seems to be like sections of lighter and darker colour, as if there were veins separating them. So I might just try to um, draw that out lightly on my sketch, um, point it out, and then later I can add the colour. So at this stage, I'm still doing a lot of observing. I'm noting down things. Um, but at some stage I might go, well, I think I've described everything there is to describe. That's not true. You can always find out more. You can, uh, for example, zoom in, zoom out to change your perspective, your point of view, like I did before, where you go around to the other side, maybe um, start looking at a different part of the same species of plant. You might focus on any different um, parts, maybe underneath or the stem, you might try and um, ask some questions. So what kind of a plant is this is probably the most common first question that people will ask. Um, children are really good at asking the more creative questions. So um, that's something that I'm still trying to improve on. But I find that once you get started with one or two, you build on them. So one thing I said before was that the veins on this leaf didn't alternate. They seemed to split off um, at the same point. But I noticed in this big leaf that they are actually alternating. So that's an interesting observation that I'll write down. I want to bring attention to it because to me that was a little aha moment. So I'm just making a bit of an arrow to emphasize that this is a, ah, but wait. They're asymmetrical. So I feel like I've got a lot of observations down. Now I want to try and think of some questions. To write down my questions, I'm just going to put a question mark um, in like a circle. And then I know that those are the questions on my page, so they're easy to find again. So even a simple why. So why are these stems striped or they got like stripy dots, pigments in them? Why does it uh, start off more darker red down the bottom and become more yellow and green towards the tip of the leaf? I 
I could ask something like, how many um, leaves have sprouted? How old is this plant? Um, is there a limit to how many leaves it could grow in the pot? Why are they this shape? Now, I said at the start that it looks like a heart shape, and that's the third prompt that you should try to incorporate into your page. So first off, what do you notice? Secondly, um, can you ask some questions? So I wonder. And the final one is, it reminds me of. So I said it reminded me of a heart-shaped leaf. So I've drawn a little heart and I'm just going to note down that that's what it reminds me of. And I'm using the acronym IRMO, it reminds me of. Um, now you might go, well, what's the point in writing this stuff down? There might not be, but again, there might be as well. Um, you don't necessarily know where things will lead, but if you don't write them down, they'll be forgotten. And if you do write them down, you might not even make any links or connections in this session, but later on, when you're flicking back through your notebooks or someone else might be, whether that's at the end of a week, a month, or years from now, they might make a connection, future you or someone else. And those connections can be very powerful. So it's this um, cross-linking of ideas. So right now, the heart might not mean much, but um, there might be a purpose, a reason why it's formed that shape. And if we can find the reason out for that, then maybe that will have significance in other fields that need to use that shape for the same reason. There's a lot to explore. I could keep going. Um, this is how much I've written on my page so far, so not quite a full page, but what I want to do now is um, move on and add some colour, and I've still got a bit of room if I do have more ideas that I want to jot down while I'm doing that. So it, it can be good to stop before you feel like you're done, um, because then you've still got room to add more, and don't be scared of leaving it an unfinished page either. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use colour. You don't have to use colour. Um, you could just maybe use black and white or add some grey, keep it monochrome. Um, if you just want a shorter session, uh, you can always come back and do it later when you've got more time or let's say you're out and about and the conditions aren't the best, then don't feel bad about finishing off it off at home. So I've got some coloured um, pens here, and I've got some coloured watercolour pencils, and I've also got a little travel case of watercolours, um, as well as a water brush. So um, I just need one size because with one brush, if you've got a large enough brush, you can also use the very fine tip to make thin marks. Um, and finally, uh, an old sock that I um, have just cut up and you can put on your wrist and use it to wipe um, the brush when you want to clean the tip um, before putting it into another colour um, without needing to carry paper towels and worrying about disposal. I'm going to start off with my pens. I like to use a bright colour, so I'm using orange right now to um, draw the circles for my questions.
And then those numbers that I j jotted down before about where the veins were and how many I counted, I'm just going to give them um, a circle as well, but in blue. So just a little bit of colour can already help break apart the page, lay it out differently, draw your eye to different parts. I can immediately tell what's a question, what's an observation, um, and things that I want my eye or like I feel are more important, so headings, titles, um, the metadata up here in the corner that's sectioned off using a green box. Um, it just feels a little bit more organised, but I do that afterwards, I don't plan it out in advance. Here are like the mixing uh, little wells, and I've just cleaned it off, and you can either use the sock or a tissue, paper towel um, at home. Um, I like to make sure they're clean, but um, this is a tip from John Muir Laws, so to section off the colours um, so that you've got like the the yellows, reds and greens, and then blues separate. Um, so I've got like the warm colours and then the cooler colours, and trying to keep the yellows separate because you want to keep them clean. So. Um, I'm going to use watercolours to paint or bring in the colour for that large leaf that I drew, but then I'm going to switch to the pencils, the watercolour pencils, for um, the, the stem of the pot plant because it's a bit more finer detail and it'll just be easier to do. So I start off with um, the colour I feel is closest to the colour here. So I think this is like a, a sap green. Um, it's a bit more of a yellow green. The other green I've got in the set is a bit more of a tropical blue green. Um, and then I actually think that's pretty close as is. I can just put down a little mark and see if I think that's close enough. I think it could be a bit darker, so I will add just a touch of that tropical green to it. And um, it's also lighter because I've got a lot of water in there, so adding more of the pigment, and then I'm just going to colour it in. Um, it You really don't need to be artistic at all. So I've literally drawn a heart with some funny edges, um, drawn some lines, and then I'm colouring in. So you don't need to be an artist. I might have gone just a little bit too blue, so I add a little bit more yellow, a warm yellow because that's closer to the green that I want, and just add that in. Now this isn't watercolour paper, but it is paper that can take a little bit of water without buckling too much, so it will buckle, but it won't um, destroy the paper, it won't seep through. What I would also recommend is to write down what colours you used um, for future reference. Now if you want to make it a bit darker, what you do is you add the opposite colour. So you'd add a touch of red and that would mute it, so it would make it less vibrant, um, but it also darkens it. So I'm going to add just a touch of the pinky red here. And maybe just add a few Um, sections just to show that there is a variation in the um, in the leaf. Now it is lighter towards the middle. So if I want, I could maybe add a bit of a lighter colour. Now with watercolour, it's hard to add layers where you go lighter. You generally the whiter the paper is, the lightest, the brightest. Um, so you, I like to add the lightest colours and then you add more and more dark colours. Um, but because it's already green, I can just sort of make it a bit more yellow in the middle. 
and around those veins. Okay, so that's the main leaf done. It doesn't take long, watercolour will dry quickly as well, so that's another handy thing about it. And I'll let that just sit there and dry. Um, didn't even need to use this, so I might just wipe it clean. Um, can drip a bit of water. Don't worry if this gets discoloured, but try to be gentle with the tip so it lasts. So moving on to the watercolour pencils now. I was going to do the stem, so I want to try and get the colour at the tip and the colour more towards the base and those stripy pigment bits, which to me are a bit of a purple. So I'm going to use um, like this tan yellow ochre, green. And then I've got um, deep red and violet here. So I'm applying the tan throughout because I feel like that's the base color and maybe just a little bit of the green as well. It almost looks like a yellow, grey, green. And then if I want to, with the water brush, I can mix it. Now it looks quite green, so I think I will go back with the yellow while it's wet. I think I'm just going to go with the purple. Sort of emphasize that it's getting darker down the bottom and go over those little lines. I hope this has given you the confidence to start nature journaling yourself. Remember to check out my Instagram or website for the 31 ideas challenge prompts and share your pages using the hashtag try nature journaling. If you have any questions I'd love to help you out just let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.